Hello viewers and welcome today to a session in PVP OE security. Uh, we're going to provide you with a basic overview of the security, so let's get started. PAP, what is password authentication protocol? Well, it's basically a two-way handshake and it's of course in clear text. So anyone wanting to get your username and password for a uh, protocol analyzer will be able to do it with ease. CHAP, well basically this is challenge handshake authentication protocol. So it's basically a three-way handshake, all done in MD5 hashes. So it's, it is very hard to get someone's uh, username and password, but not impossible. This is one of the, PAP is the most common form of authentication ISP. CHAP is the least common authentication ISP. And now to our fourth slide over here, which deals with other authentication types, which we won't talk much about basically because it's rarely used. So MS CHAP protocols, so version one, version two, EAP, and of course, these ones support PVP encryption in a form of MPPE, which goes up to 128-bit encryption, and it's based on RC4 algorithm. But again, this will be the outside of the scope of our, our, our topic, as it is rarely used. So let's go to some examples of Wireshark captures and screenshots. So the first one basically is basically PAP, PAP and how to steal PAP password and how to fish them as well. So let's open the first one. So in this, in, this, in this screenshot, we see Fortinet asking for an access concentrator, and we found MicroTik. And then basically, we go all the way down for the LCP, our testing link, and basically has found the PAP authentication method to be best suited. Now, in this case, Fortinet was set to auto-negotiate. So it's found PAP was to be the one to be used, since MicroTik was offering it. And so you can see that the username and password is set in clear text. Obviously, it's pretty bad because apart from stealing your ISP username and password, they're also stealing your network as well. You know, this is another form of phishing. And this is an example as it goes on, and we can see we do some DNS. Um, you can see some information ICMP version 6, which is a, a, a multicast, not PV6. So you can see some TCP packets being sent through, SIP. So you can see that the connection has been established. In this case, uh, Fortinet is connected to a rogue network. So despite Fortinet being one of the best security appliances, it has actually fallen for this immensely way of phishing your entire PBP session. And obviously none of these IP addresses, of course, are actually real. They're all being simulated on a virtual environment. And any DNS queries is sent will be sent to a rogue DNS server. So obviously this is a bit scary. Anyway, we'll move to the CHAP version, which actually, thankfully, can, can actually authenticate and prevent this method from happening, at least on the authentication protocol side of things. So this is basically uh, a Windows computer and a MicroTik box connecting, connecting to each other. You can see basically we're using a virtual session here. And we can see we have MicroTik as the access concentrator name, and basically our LCP link testing phase, and you can also see CHAP being front here because we can see this is MD5 hash. So we can see basically a challenge, a response, and successful message welcome. Rogue access concentrators unfortunately cannot attack on CHAP. So if you have, if you set CHAP as your as your um, mandatory authentication protocol, you'll actually see the rogue access concentrator will not be able to match this response. Therefore, being saved from phishing. However, this is only on the authentication side of things. There are otherwise still being phished. And of course, this is the success once we get in. You can see all the, all the stuff happening between the access concentrator um, and my client doing all the session, tra session um, communications because of TCP DNS. But anyway, we'll leave this, this, this Wireshark capture. So Fortinet. So what does Fortinet offer? Well, unfortunately, PPOE servers unfortunately have a thing called no authentication method. Now this example, this is Fortinet. Now Fortinet in this example has been forced onto CHAP. Now theoretically speaking, I should not see a PVP zero session on my on my Linux box, but unfortunately it, it has happened. Fortinet, despite being set to any form of authentication, whether it be PAP only, CHAP only, MS version one only, or MS version two only, no matter how I fix it, it still falls for this phishing attack. So therefore, it's a problem because we can see that Fortinet has successfully connected to my rogue Linux access concentrator. Just because PPP does not, PPP actually has authentication as an optional flag in IRFC 1661 section 3.5 in the IRFC um, text. 
So authentication is actually not mandatory. So whatever authentication protocol I use, I will always get in to this rogue network. Now, since we're in, we'd basically log into the, um, our, our router page in Fortinet, and we can see that the WAN IP is unknown, of course, because we're on a rogue network. It has no idea what to do, and the security rating basically has no idea what's happening. Nonetheless, it seems pretty fine to me, so let's go to the next page. So here we have a WAN endpoint, and we have 172.16.02 as our public IP address. Now obviously this is a bit of a worry because it's not my normal public IP address, so obviously why is this, why is this happening on my network? And now we, we know it's a PPP network because it's just a security mask. Now here we can see we are using PPPoE, and I used the username and password. Guys, because we're using no authentication on the remote side, you can type in whatever username and password and you'll, you'll still be fished no matter how hard you try. The command line variable in Fortinet also specifies the type of authentication to be no negotiated. Throw it in the rubbish bin. It's no use with no authentication on a remote end. Here I establish an SSH session. Now the risk is basically medium low. So you can see this is a war because now I, have, I now have my IP address to my laptop connecting to my road access constraint via SSH. Now SSH is like telnet but encrypted. Now you can imagine basically what the hacker can do basically and I'll give you some information at the, end of, uh, at the end of the slide. Here I can ping the, the, the rogue access concentrator. And you can see the pings are pretty high. Note, I am using Ethernet over power lines, so it is a bit laggy sometimes. But nonetheless, I can ping the remote access concentrator. And here I have successfully, you can see Alexander at 172.16.0.1. So I know I'm connected to the rogue access constructor and we can see we have connected and we are fortunately the fake AC which is hosting the SSH tunnel. We are basically going, through, going hot knife through butter through the Fortinet device. You can see it works perfectly fine. So it is a bit of a worry. Now I'll go to the I'll go to the Wireshark captures and show you basically what's happened here, despite the Fortinet appliance being set to chap and only the chap. But you'll see something very remarkable here. So basically what's happened what's happened here? Is I have connected to an access. Um, spe I have. I, I'm specifying an access concentrator here, and I found one called ISP. Now this is our Linux box. Now this is now. Pay attention to this Wireshark slide because you can see here, the LCPs all deal with link testing. However, once the LCPs are finished, we jump into IPCPs. Whoa, 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 whoa! What happened to our authentication method specified in the CLI, in the CLI parameter in Fortinet? There is no there, there is no chap being negotiated here, but I said Fortinet, can you please use chap? And he said yes, I will use chap, but unfortunately the rogue server has decided to say no, you are coming to my network, no matter how you no matter what you do. And unfortunately, the Fortinet has been has, has fallen to this attack, and you can see all the echo replies, leak testing phase, and we can see the IPCP, and basically in basically it's pretty simple basically, and you can see our rogue information. Um, and so basically this is very scary because now we have DNS being used here. Now fortunately this was a, a simple experiment, but my other previous experiments I, used, uh, I actually placed a rogue DNS server. Now this was very damaging because I was able to send, uh, to send an email from my mail server which is heavily secured to any domain name I wish to do. So for example abc at zxy.akkk. And what happened, it went straight through to the rogue access constraint and I received the mail. So you can see how bad this is. By the way, the only thing that didn't work on the, um, on the Fortinet um, appliance was actually um, web traffic. So HTTP and HTTPS did not work. It came with a proxy error. So I guess there's one, there's one thing you can put um, uh, for Fortinet. However, mileage will vary depending on what configurations you do on your Fortinet appliance. So keep that in mind actually. And of course, these are all the sessions established. And here is an example of the rogue AC sending an SSH server. Okay. So maybe I could have done maybe some extra parameters on, on Fortinet, and maybe could have said, mm, be careful, you know, stop it if we don't know what network we are. I don't know much about Fortinet, but I know it's one hell of a device anyway. But this, this, as I said, it's very unlikely you will be hijacked this way anyway. And this is the SSH uh, channel between the... Uh, between the PPOE client, which is number two, and the PPOE server, number one. 
and I'll bust this hot knife through bad straight through. Uh, closest one. So I think the name of the game here really is, you know, make sure your WAN endpoint is actually secure in the first place. If not, you cannot pretend Fortinet to do all the heavy lifting work, you know, for the sake of layer two or layer one being, well, not working well in the first place. So now we go to the Windows client. Now Windows client gave me something similar to Fortinet, but it's a bit different, but I'll show an example. So here we are basically using broadband connection um, five. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the service name blank, just as we did in the, on the last video. Uh, we also told it to use no encryption and we told it to use chat, just the way we did with Fortinet. Um, and here is the selection we used. Uh, here is the username and password, so I typed in anything that I could think of. And we see how it works. It should not work, but we'll see. And it's worked perfectly fine. So the connection has established to the rogue access concentrator, which I feared it would happen in the first place. And here we are, connection. We can see it's all established. We've got internet, everything. So now, good luck from here on. If you, you know, when you fish this way, you can see we got, we got an IP address, we've got a subnet mask, and we've got a, um, a DNS server. And the default gateway basically, is basically goes through the PPP session. Now here is very incredible here. You can see the authentication is set to unknown. How can it be? Why is this unknown? I said chap, I didn't set unknown, I didn't click on unknown, but it has happened. Because the rogue access concentrator has given the best method of authenticating, which was for no authentication, the first place set on the rogue access concentrator, Windows has determined that this is actually, well, since they're letting us in, why bother? And so you can see how Windows has actually let the connection go through. So now I try the same thing, but an Amazon version too. Seeing, you know, if seeing Fortinet failed here as well, we'll see what Windows does. We select the connection, and we try it. But oh, what's happened here? The connection has failed. Now this is interesting because Fortinet didn't fail here; it went straight through. You can see the connection was terminated by the remote computer before it could be completed. So no matter how hard I try. MSF version 2 wasn't letting me in. So did Windows, Windows have a secret security method that Fortinet doesn't have? Let's find out. Watch that captures. Let's start with the first one here. Let's wait to load up. Here we are. So basically in this example over here, we can see our access concentrator is called Alexander. And here we can see that despite saying it to chat, we can see the LCPs that went perfectly fine. But it hasn't talked to anything about authentication. The authentication has been left out altogether. Left out altogether. And we can see basically how it gets through to the IPCP. And bang, we're now authenticating into the rogue access concentrators network. Now anything can really happen here. So I wouldn't be typing your credit card details anytime soon in this network because anything is really possible in this in, in this scenario. And we can see we're all in basically. But with MS version 2, something, something has happened here. And I'm going to show you when this loads up. What we see here is the same thing, but we've seen these LCP, and look at the configuration NAC, NAC, all these NAC. Now let's click on one of these NAC over here, and let's find out what it, what it, has, what it has to offer. Authentication protocol, look, the, the server, is in, the, the client is insisting on authentication protocol. We'll see here, authentication protocol, challenge, handshake authentication protocol, and we can see algorithm MSCHAP2. This means that when you set to MS version 2, the client, which is the Dell, will say, no server, I want to authenticate through MS version 2. And if you don't like it, I will hang up. And what, what, what had happened on the picture show last time before, the connection terminated. I do wish that, 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 that the Fortinet and other appliances would follow this method. But unfortunately, it doesn't, since authentication is not mandatory on PPP. So now we'll close the Wireshark caption. Now to our external sources, which I've loaded up on the web page. Now I'm not the only one that has discovered this problem, and I think this actually deserves a bit of attention. I'll leave these, I'll leave these, um, these, the, the, these, these links on, on on the video description. But basically, it says all your credits are belong belong to us. Hacking and ISP for fun and internet. 
And basically, here's an introduction, but I won't go into this. You can read this in your own. You can read this basically after in your own time or in your leisure time. Uh, basically, all this basically deals. And by the way, I don't do this on the real internet. All of my testing has been on on a on a, on a closed line environment, so no internet. Um, ISP setup, reconnaissance. So basically, a reconnaissance here it does. And so basically, his idea basically is to leverage PAP, and basically, essentially get the username and password added to the database and basically what you see is how to do the vert you have to do Ubuntu with Ruby OS server using a virtual machine. Some of the commands here use he gives no auth so if you remove the required pap you don't have to worry about authentication whatsoever. Um, so maybe some information on how he does it, people be driver and basically I just want to get to the part here, stage two, hosting a fake access concentrator. So incredibly, yes you you host it on your WAN endpoint and basically, watch the username and passwords being harvested. Basically, so there's all things you can do with this anyway. Um, you can disconnect people. Uh, there's all things you can basically do anyway. But again, have a look. Have a look at this because this is actually pretty interesting anyway. For internet, you know, when you have someone else's line stolen. Uh, but then you can do phishing and you can get harvest credit card numbers since you are a man in the middle of the first place. So I'll go to the next one. Uh, this is a Russian guy basically that's intercepting a few POE sessions. So uh, I won't go. All this in detail, but basically, what you can see here is um, people are client, how it typically works. He basically intercepts the line and it basically hub, it basically connects to it, and basically, the poor client basically is um, fished completely. So, basically, use chap a recharge option, um, but then again, it all depends basically on, on how good your device is. Um, so this is basically hijacking a PPPoE session. There's all things you can do with the new way, you know, besides stealing the, your username and password from the internet. And thirdly, this one over here, and so I found out the no authentication problem. It says initially what I do to fix it was put no auth in the PPP server options file. Now basically this allowed me to connect with any login password I wanted from my Windows box, provided using PAP or CHAP. If not, it will not work because there is no authentication. So that's quite important because in reality, um, you know, phishing can be done basically with almost any authentication protocol you can think of. Now, I haven't tried with encryption because 14 does not support encryption, but Windows simply kicks me out anyway. So obviously, I won't, I won't have success with Windows with MSF version 1 and MSF version 2. Uh, other devices I've tested here besides the FortiGate and the Windows 10, I tried on a DSR, D D-Link DSR 250N. That went hot knife for butter for all the authentication set and links to Cisco, the BEF, SR41 version 4.2 that also um, came came under the Fisher's control and the Microtik um, router OS using PPPoE client that also came down as the Fisher uh, uh, just that also that also came down under the Fisher's control. So I think what we have to basically understand here is if someone um, has your line, chances are they'll do whatever they want with it, and it is a really bad trick. Now, this, let's not get too paranoid here. This is very rare to happen in a real life world. Your WAN provider has really got to have to give you a very crappy link in the first place in terms of security in order for this to happen. So don't be too worried. This is not something that happens very often. Um, it is rarely, it, it rarely happens, but I think we should be um, a bit uh, knowledgeable uh, on some of the security because we know Ethernet can, can have problems with ARP spoofing and you name it. But PPP does have its, does have its fair share of problems. And I think they're equally bad when it comes to security because really they haven't they haven't that much security in mind in the first place, you know. So I, I think that's something that needs to be watched. But then again, this is only a basic uh, overview, and um, I think you know, um, you know, I think I hope you enjoy this video. I know it's probably um, not the very best into the most in-depth ones, some of the other ones out there. But I hope this gives you an overview because it's meant to be simplified so everyone can understand. So this is the end for the video. So thanks for watching. All links and resources will be available on the video description. Uh, like, comment, subscribe um, will be appreciated. And thanks very much.